Coming up, sheriff's deputies keep watch on a hospitalized man involved in a fatal traffic accident. And an inmate becomes the first Georgia woman to be executed in 70 years. We'll have these stories and more. Your News by Alsta starts now. Welcome to News Valdosta. I'm Elizabeth Tate. And I'm Cassandra Massey. A man wanted in a local arson case is in the sheriff's custody today following his involvement in a fatal Florida car wreck. Florida authorities say 28-year-old Cody Allen Cooper collided with the van at approximately 1 p.m. Sunday after he allegedly failed to stay in his lane. The van's passenger, 77-year-old Margaret Corbett Walker, died due to severe injuries. Cooper and his 5-year-old passenger were rushed to South Georgia Medical Center for treatment of serious injuries. FHP troopers have tested Cooper to determine if he was under the influence during the crash. Cooper is currently back in custody of Lowndes County as he recovers at SGMC. He has been awaiting extradition to Lowndes County on a first-degree arson charge, according to the Lowndes County Sheriff's Office. He was awaiting extradition from Florida to Georgia when he was released on bond last Thursday. Death row inmate Kelly Gissendaner was executed early this morning by the state of Georgia. She was incarcerated for nearly two decades for the murder of her husband, Doug Gissendaner, in 1997. Gissendaner was scheduled to be executed yesterday at 7 p.m., but her lawyers filed appeals to the state and federal courts in the final hours to try to spare her life. When the parole board denied the appeals, the legal team filed three more appeals to the U.S. Supreme Court, all of which were also denied. In her final statements, she apologized for her actions. Want to see what $88,000 in marijuana looks like? Here's a photo of the marijuana that was allegedly sent to 29-year-old Vendrick Dawson, the man arrested for receiving the drugs on Monday. Dawson was charged with possession of marijuana with intent to distribute and first-degree forgery, according to police reports. A Valdosta man has been arrested for the theft of a vehicle stolen from a North Ashley Street gas station. 23-year-old Jamar Manson has been charged with felony theft of, by taking after allegedly stealing a 2006 Ford F-150 at approximately 5 a.m. on Monday. According to the Pol Valdosta Police Department reports, the owner of the truck left the vehicle running and once he went inside the gas station, Manson made his move. After the information on the stolen vehicle was processed, VPD received a call from Volusia County, Florida, with news that the driver of the vehicle had been detained. Manson had been held at the Volusia County, and extradition procedures will take place before he's returned to Lowndes County. Over the weekend, the Hospital Authority of Valdosta and Lowndes County made new decisions concerning the South Georgia Medical Center Lakeland Villa Replacement Nursing Home. The new 62-bed facility, facility is estimated to cost $11 million with private rooms from the residents and two courtyards. There will be two nursing stations and upgraded technology will be allowed will allow the staff to care for the patients more effectively. The home will take about 14 months to complete. When we come back, we'll explain how the Valdosta Board of Education is making important decisions about its new high school. So don't go away. Here, beauty is a lot more than skin deep. For more than 100 years, we have focused on creating individual success stories. This is a place where professors are mentors. Competition is cheered. Collaboration counts. Experience is hands-on. And connections are lifelong. VSU, over 100 majors, championship athletics, focused on your success.
traditional light bulbs actually generate nine times more heat than light. Switch to Energy Star light bulbs, and you'll realize just how much cash you are really burning through. Saving energy saves you money. Learn more at energysavers.gov. Welcome back. Next month, construction schedules and procedures concerning the new Vadasta High School will be reviewed in a community's meeting. The meeting will be held by JCI Parish at 5.30 p.m. on October 27th at the Horn Learning Center. Some members of the Valdosta Board of Education are concerned with building the best school possible, while others are more concerned with making sure local contractors are included in the bidding process, in the building process. Bidding and the pre-qualification process for contractors will be discussed in further detail at next month's meeting. Officials from Wiregrass Technical Colleges met with the officials from Thomas University earlier this week to sign an articulation agreement. The agreement will allow students who graduate from Wiregrass with an associate's degree in nursing to attend a more advanced program at Thomas University. By attending the university, the students will be able to earn a bachelor's degree with credit for their first two years of study. The last day to register for voting in the next election is this coming Monday, October 5th. In order to be eligible to vote, you must be a U.S. citizen, a legal resident of Georgia, and at least 18 years of age, and not serving a sentence for a felony. And you must be registered prior to election day. Yesterday, the Valdosta Lowndes County Parks and Recreation Authority began the use of the Fall 2015 Youth Football and Cheerleading Rained Out Text Alerts. The texts are being used to help notify parents of any children participating in the programs of when games are called. The VLPRA sent out a test message yesterday at 10 and is urging anyone who did not receive the message to go online to rainedout.com and reapply. For more information on the text messages, go online to VLPRA.com. It's time to take out the trash again. The trash in our rivers. This weekend, a local environmental group is making its annual big push to clean out our waterways. News Valdosta reporter Mark Mangel bring us more. Valdosta and Lowndes County area residents will have an opportunity to make a splash on Saturday, October 3rd with the return of Rivers Alive. This event is a part of a statewide cleanup initiative that promotes the health and beauty of Georgia's 70,000 miles of rivers, streams, and waterways. The event will be hosted locally by Keep Lowndes and Valdosta Beautiful and will be part of Georgia's 24th annual River Cleanup Month. The volunteers will be joining an estimated 10,000 plus people that have already been participating statewide. KLVB has also already started signing up volunteers for its October 24th Make a Difference Day event. If you are interested, you can help us by making sure that the volunteers are evenly distributed to different sites where they are needed. Please contact Aaron Strickland at 229-671-3698 for further details. We're now going to head back to the news desk. For News Valdosta, I'm Mark Mongel. Thank you, Mark. When we come back, we'll have the weather with Victoria Dean. Don't go away.
The average text takes your eyes off the road for nearly five seconds. Welcome back to News Vadausta. We've been enjoying cooler temperatures and overcast days, but will that change soon? Let's check in with weather anchor Victoria Dean and find out. Thanks, Elizabeth. It may be fall, everyone, but today's weather will be more on the hot side, with 86 degrees being the highest temperature all day. There will be a 60% chance of precipitation as well. Now tonight, there will be a drop in the temperature to 70 degrees. There will also be some early thunderstorms. Please remember to always find shelter immediately if you are outside caught in a thunderstorm. Then, tomorrow will be the first day of October. There will be a nice high of 83 degrees all day with a 50% chance of precipitation. Today's UV index will be on the low end with a rating of 4. This is considered moderate, but don't forget to always protect yourself with a sunscreen of at least SPF 15. Today's pollen count is a little on the medium side with a rating of 6.4. So if you have allergies, be sure to protect yourself with the proper medication to avoid any reactions. Well, that's the forecast for today. Let's head back to the news desk. Thanks, Victoria. We're going to take a short break, but when we return, Chris Carter will have our latest sports report. So stay with us. In 1977, in Johannesburg, South Africa, an eight-year-old boy picked up the game of golf from his father. By the age of nine, he was already out playing him. The odds of this gentle lad winning the Junior World Golf Championships at the age of 14 one in 16 million. The odds of that same boy then making it to the US and European pro golf tours, one in seven million. The odds of the Big Easy winning the Open Championship once and the US Open Championship twice, one in 780 million. The odds of this professional golfer having a child diagnosed with autism, one in 110. Ernie Els encourages you to learn the signs of autism at autismspeaks.org. Early diagnosis can make a lifetime of difference. I got my MBA online at VSU. As a working mom who travels on business, I needed an MBA program that fit my schedule and allowed me to balance both my work and home life. VSU's Web MBA was perfect. I was able to spend time with my family in the evenings and then complete my assignments. My MBA is one of my greatest accomplishments. It was hard work, but I would do it again in a heartbeat. Don't wait. Start your MBA today. Welcome back. The VSU women's tennis team had an eventful weekend. Our sports reporter Chris Carter has more on the story. Chris? That's right. The Valsa State women's tennis team participated in the USTA South Regional Championship hosted by West Florida this past weekend. Although the Blazers did not fare well in doubles, they did much better in singles play as sophomore B. Hernandez and junior Laura Ubeda advanced to the final eight. Returning sophomore Sabrina Schmidt also had a strong showing, winning her first match 7-5 and 6-2 before falling to the eventual champion from St. Leo, Natalia Sedliska in two close sets. The regional championship wraps up fall action for the women's tennis team. The spring season is set to start in February. The Lowndes Vikings will host the Colquitt Packers this Friday at Martin Stadium. This game will kick off the Region 1 6A opener for both teams. The Vikings are undefeated at home so far and this season quarterback Austin Dixon is looking to keep, it, keep that streak alive. The game is set to kick off at 8 p.m. and tickets are $9 at the gate. <clears throat> the Valdosta Wildcats football team will play a big game against Camden at home on Friday night as they begin region play. The Wildcats are feeling fresh off a of bye week this past Friday and hope to snag a big victory before facing Tift County next week. The game will take place at Baysmore Hyder Stadium at 8 p.m. The Tift County Lady Devils had a great Tuesday as they not only honored five seniors before the first pitch, 
but also beat the Varasta Lady Cats 9-1 in five innings. This win gives Tiff County a 6-1 record in their region, where they currently sit in first ahead of the 5-2 Lee County Trojans. Tiff County hosts Colquitt Thursday afternoon, who's coming off a big win against Lee County. The Lowndes High Competition Cheer Team will be participating in a meet this Saturday in Ware County. The meet will begin at 1 p.m. and the exact time that each cheer team hits the mat will be given the day before the competition. That's all I have for sports. Back to you ladies at the news desk. Thanks, Chris. Still to come on News Bad Alsta, we'll have an update of the arts. And you don't want to miss that. Stay with us. Get your I am so You're not f***ed in here. Yes, I am. No, 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 no. Every day, kids witness bullying. Why are you stabbing me with it? No, no. They want to help, no. but don't know how. Oh, you Teach your kids how to be more than a bystander. Visit stopbullying.gov. So, I got this new family, and I don't know what it is about this one, but she can't seem to put down that toy all day long. Tap, 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 tap. Oh, and she even talks to it. She talks to that more than she talks to him. What's up, bro? Nice shirt. Who's she talking to? Her mom? She talks to her mom a lot. Welcome back to News Valdosta. The Valdosta Theater Guild is back again. This weekend, the Guild will be presenting See How They Run at the Douster Playhouse. The actors have prepared to give the audience a good laugh with this comedy. The show will air a marathon, giving the audience a chance to see how it's prepared. The show will run from October 8th through the 10th, starting at 7.30 p.m. For more information, be sure to contact the Valdosta Theater Guild or visit their website. This Friday, the Valdosta State Planetarium will be presenting Pluto Revealed at 7, 8, and 9 p.m. Dr. Kenneth Rumstay, professor of physics and astronomy, will share the story of Pluto, which he says is everyone's favorite dwarf planet. This is the first show at VSU's planetarium for the 2015-2016 season. Seating for each of the three shows is limited, and tickets are available on a first-come, first-served basis. The show will be open to the public, and it is appropriate for children ages 5 and up. Thanks for watching News Vet Alsta. I'm Cassandra Massey. And I'm Elizabeth Tate. We'll be back tomorrow with more local news. Have a great day.